Let's start out just kind of talking about your career at Lawrence Academy. Um, statistically, you had a great career. Right. You won some big games over over your years there. Um, how do you kind of remember your time there, and how would you describe overall your your athletic career? Um, it was like family. I mean, we my like being there from ninth grade, twelfth grade. I knew like most of the guys. I played with them ever since I was young. So it wasn't like I was meeting all new people. And we had a good group. We had um, Brandon Martin and. Justin Campbell, and we had a couple kids go. Um, well, Brandon went D1, Rylan Culberson's here now playing football, so. And, I mean, us having good success, we turned out having, I went out there, we had four state championships and one, I mean, a lot of games. So we beat some big schools too, so. And when did you kind of realize that you had the, the talent and the stuff to pitch at the, uh, the next level? My 10th grade year, I started getting recognized here. I played a showcase. Uh, during the summer of my 10th grade year and uh, Ray Tanner and Chad Holbrook came up to me and uh, wanted to talk to me and my family a little bit and they said they were interested and were going to offer me a little bit and if I wanted to commit then I could then so um, they offered me some of my 10th grade year I went to the beach and then I made up my mind then that I was going to come here. And I uh, saw in an interview you did from high school that you kind of said, uh, you know, you, you've always been a Gamecocks fan. This is kind of where you wanted to be since uh, you were younger. What was that day like uh, being able to join the team that, that, that you've looked, uh, looked up to for so many years? Absolutely, yeah. Ever since I was probably eight or nine years old. I mean, I've, I've always wanted to come here. I've, it's always been a big deal. We know that um, they've always had a good program here. So I was like, really? And then they won the national championship, so that kind of added on to things too. So. Growing up, me and my dad have always been big Carolina fans. My mom and sister were Clemson fans, so we kind of like had like a little house divided going on. So, but no, it was it was awesome. Me and my dad went absolutely crazy. So, and now, uh, so you injured your elbow in 2011. When did uh when did you injure that? When because you still put up pretty good numbers. Uh, 1.4 ERA, 63 strikeouts, batted pretty well. When did uh when did you get that injury? It was my senior year. Um, it was halfway through the year, okay. so I actually had a couple games I got to pitch in, and um, I was actually I was throwing one of my better years that year. So, and then I was throwing against Greer um, midway through the season. I kind of felt like a little irritation, and I probably threw two more weeks, and then um, we were playing at home against a big team, Greer High School, and then I felt a pop, and I knew it was in. So. And what, what kind of goes through your mind at that time? By then you had committed to play with Carolina. Um, like you said, you were having a great senior year. You know your future is bright, but now you have to deal with kind of uh, the surgery and the rehabilitation that comes with it. Right. Um, I mean, I know guys go through it all the time, and I guess it was God's way of humbling me. Or I'm, and he didn't make mistakes. So I think it all happened for a reason. It made me stronger, and, and here I am again. I'm doing better than I ever have been. So. And now, uh, how, how did USC kind of find out about, uh, about your injury, and what was their initial reaction to, uh, to that? Um, well, as soon as, I, as soon as that happened, I went to the doctors. I didn't want to tell them and um, say that I had to have Tommy John when I really didn't know for a fact. So I went, um, saw a couple of doctors um, in Greenville, and then I came up here and saw one of their daughters. And then once I came and saw their daughters, I kind of let them know. And then we kind of talked, and he told me to take my time. I mean, I had plenty of time. I don't really have to play my freshman year because we have a, like a lot of good pitchers so it wasn't like a have to play this year so he told me to take my time and do my own thing. So. And now uh, you didn't come here in the fall is that correct you came here in, in right. January right? What yeah. went into that decision was it the rehab process what, what, what went into that? It was, a, it was rehab they wanted me to um, actually I mean get strong I already had coming in from high school I had 35 credit hours so it wasn't like I had to come in and take a bunch of courses and stuff like that so I kind of took a break, my fall break, and uh, got my arm back right. So, and um, when you, when you did finally get up here in uh, January, do you think they're the training, working with the training staff up here, being in the environment with the other players and stuff, do you think that was a big reason that kind of helped you uh, uh, rehab a little bit better and come back full strength like you did? Yes, um, players. I mean, they pushed me, coaches pushed me, and that just made me a lot stronger than just. I mean, me being on my own and trying to push myself out of other guys, you know, push me on, try to make me better. So it helped out a lot. And uh, it, it's kind of been my experience that the rehab process for a, a sports injury can actually be a little bit harder than the, than the actual injury, uh, physically and mentally. 
Uh, so take me through that rehab process that you went through. Uh, what was it like for you? Were there, were there any struggles for you? And what, how'd you push through that? It was long. Um, I started off, I mean, with, they took the tendon out of my arm. So it started off with hand motion. So I got that down pat and then it was just getting my range of motion. So I tried to get my arm extended and stuff like that. And it wasn't until four or five months before I even picked up a ball. And that, that kind of irritates you being on a throw, I mean, every year and then having to take four or five months off, it's, it's rough. And then um, at getting there, when you first start throwing, you're starting to throw live and stuff like that. And you don't have, I mean, your miles per hour is what you had before. So it's kind of, in the back of your mind, it just irritates you. I mean, you want to be just as good as you were, if not better, and then it's just, you gotta be patient, that's all it is. And was there any kind of, uh, I guess, mental hurdle for you to get over as far as really trusting your arm and elbow again that had been repaired, that you could throw full strength again, throw as hard as you did in high school? Yeah, Tyler Webb and them, they had also had the same surgery I did, and I kept talking to them, and I probably bugged them to death. I mean, I was like, how did you do this? Well, how did it feel when you did this? And they told me, said, be patient, dude, just be patient. And finally, I'm starting to get it back now. I'm upper 80, so it's helping out. And uh, you know, I've heard a lot of pitchers say after Tommy John surgery, they actually kind of come back more effective, maybe a little bit more powerful. Do you, and you're still coming back at full strength, but do you kind of feel that? Do you kind of feel as though that might be the case for you as well? I think so. Um, me and Coach Meyer are kind of working together. We're trying to get everything, puzzle pieces together. And we just hope that that's the case. I'll come back stronger than what I was before. So. About how hard were you throwing in high school in senior year? Um, I think the highest I topped out was 92-93. So. And uh, so this fall was your first time playing uh, competitive baseball, I guess, since, right. since high school, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, how did it feel just, just to be back on the field competing and uh, playing the game you love again? It's, uh, it's like words can't describe it. I mean, you, you, Last time I played was on a high school. I mean, we, I played 1A private ball, and it was 250 kids my whole school. And then coming out here and playing in front of thousands and thousands of fans, it's 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 a big step in my life, and it's, it feels awesome. It does. And uh, how do you think you did this fall? How do you think it went for you? Um, well, being my first time throwing back since surgery, I think I did um, actually good. So um, I'm just I'm still working, like I said, working on things and trying to get uh, my puzzle pieces back together. And I think. Um, by the time the season starts, I'll be I'll be good to go. And what do you see your role being on this year's team? Uh, it's hard to say. We we have a bunch of good pitchers and a good staff this year, so I hope I get to play a couple of innings, uh, pitch a couple of midweek games. I'll be middle relief if I'm if I'm uh, pitching, so I'll be a relief kind of guy. And uh, I hope I get to relieve some some games this year. And uh, you were part of a great recruiting class. Uh, what do you see the potential being for your recruiting class and uh, Gamecock baseball in the next couple of years? Um, well, in my class, I had Joey Pancade and a lot of big name guys who played last year who had a, a great year and uh, they're very successful. And we have, I mean, plenty, with three more years. So I think we have um, all the potential in the world to go back to Omaha, if, I mean, if, if we play well. And I mean, we have still some good seniors, some good juniors, and a lot of good freshmen coming in too. So it helps out a lot. And uh, another thing, a little bit different note. I've heard how you've kind of been involved in back in Lawrence County, uh, helping out with kids, things like that, Dixie Youth Baseball Leagues and things like that. Right. Uh, how'd you become involved in something like that? And uh, what was the experience like? For you? It, it was in the summer last year, and um, in the years past, I've helped my uncle. I mean pitch one or two games, he has the coach's pitch where his nephew does, so I kind of throw them a little bit and get to meet some more kids. And he calls me up one afternoon and wants me to come pitch, I'm like, it's an everyday game, I guess I'll come throw. So I went through and next week we went through again, next week we went through again. Next thing I know, he wants to call me up and wants me to coach All-Stars, I'm like, whoa, big guy, like, I'm sitting here pitching one game, now I'm coaching All-Stars. So I ended up coaching that group last year, it was a um, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten year olds, I think it was. and. We didn't think, I didn't think we were going to go that far. I thought like a small town, Clinton type thing. We ended up going all the way to state. So he took up half my summer coaching that But I had a really good time, a great experience for us and the kids. So That's great. Um, as someone that young ball players can look up to, obviously a lot of kids look up to the Gamecocks baseball team. A lot of kids in Lawrence look up to what you've accomplished even, at, even in your young career. Uh, what is your journey the past three, two or three years? What, is, what, what could a younger player kind of take from that and learn from what, what you've been able to accomplish and overcome? Um, just try to get your name out there. I mean, you got to work. It's a grind every day. When you get here, you really know that 
competitions, I mean, oh, a huge step. I mean, going from high school to that, so it's, you got to work every single day to get yourself better and try to get your name out there. And, and then if you get recruited, don't stop then. You got to keep grinding, grinding, grinding. So you'll be as good and fit in when you get here. So.